I was really debating what to, to title this talk. Uh, John gave it a different uh, title, which was the title I initially put on the website was when I really wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about, and I wasn't even sure I would be asked to talk. But now that I'm here, I'm going to try for a quick name change and call this continuous tri-server integration. And uh, the goal of this is to keep your main line green all the time, so your developers aren't waiting for uh, breakages to get fixed. So when we first started at Bettable, uh, you know, the, the first thing I did when I showed up was uh, I wrote, uh, I set up a build bot because I, I, I wanted to make sure that the tests were running because they were, you know, every time I ran them, they would always be failing. And so I, uh, we, we wrote a, uh, our first Selenium test uh, as well as we had some uh, unit tests. And the, the test would always be broken. The test was can the users log into the website? And uh, that test provided us an incredible amount of value. You have a question? Four, four minutes. Okay. Yeah. So that, that provided us with uh, an incredible amount of value, um, but we got so excited about the fact that the test was broken all the time that we decided that we would write a whole bunch more tests and find out all the other things that would be broken all the time. And so we put it on our build bot, and pretty soon we had hundreds and hundreds of tests that, as you can see, takes about five hours to run. And so we're really excited about all the tests that we have, but it's really not feasible for us as developers to run all of the tests before we uh, commit. Uh, that would just be us waiting around forever, waiting for the test to run. And the point of uh, tests is to make you more productive and to make a website that works and people can use. It's not to consume all of your time. So uh, we started not running all the tests before we committed to Trunk. And we found that you know we would break the tests pretty frequently. We're using Ruby on Rails, which isn't a, a compiled language. So it's very easy to introduce just simple syntax errors into your website, uh, as well as test breakages. And uh, so you know, some number of times, you, percent of the time you commit, maybe 10%, uh, it just wouldn't work. And so we have about six developers uh, on our team, and we commit maybe five times per day, sometimes a lot more, depending on whether they're small commits. Uh, but if you do the math, that means that every day there'd be a 95% chance that the trunk would be read. Everyone would have to stop pulling from trunk. We would all have to wait for the person to fix their bug and wait for the test to run to ensure that they fixed the bug. And it was really, really annoying. And so we had to come up with a new system that would allow us to not be waiting around every single day for the, the tree to be fixed. So you know, continuous integration is a commitment that the Test code, uh, the, 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 what's in the source control is always going to be green. So you should be able to pull from it with confidence. Uh, but we changed this slightly, and we decided that we were going to say that the main line is always going to be green. But we're also going to have developer branches that are going to be read a lot. And that's fine. We're going to embrace that. So uh, we have a different approach. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're using Git. Uh, so Git makes it really easy to do branches, really easy to merge, integrate, and that has made us very much more productive. So every developer now has a branch with their name on it, and we have a server that knows about that branch and runs the tests on that branch every time someone commits to that branch. So whereas in traditional continuous integration, you have to run all the tests before you commit because you want to make sure that you don't break trunk and slow everyone else down, uh, in our continuous tri-server setup, uh, you only have to run the test that you're pretty sure you broke. And everything else, you just rely on the uh, remote server to run for you. And so rather than committing immediately to the mainline, first you commit to your branch, and it will run all of your tests for you. And then uh, you only push your branch to the mainline once, the, the tree is, uh, once your branch is green. Um, so the goal of this is to prevent these stop-the-line failures that happen all the time, would happen every day uh, if we had a system where we first commit to mainline and then we wait for the continuous integration server to tell us whether or not our tests fail or not. So uh, this is just a picture of what our build bot looks like. You can see we have, uh, I, I've simplified it a little bit, but we have a, a branch for each of uh, these five developers and then the trunk is on the right. The trunk is always green and three developers know that they're okay to push anytime they want. Two developers know that they need to fix their test before they're allowed to do any pushing. Uh, so this saves an incredible amount of time uh, because you don't have to run the test suite locally. You can always just commit with abandon, and you'll know immediately just by looking at this, the color of your builder whether or not you're good to push or not. So I'm not an expert at all in agile programming, uh, but I tried to find some other people who have been looking at this problem to see what other approaches they came up with. And I've tried to classify them by how much busy work they give the developer and how much time you spend waiting for breakages. So I showed you what a typical uh, continuous integration setup is, where you commit to trunk, and you have the build server nag you if you broke the trunk. Um, so you spend a lot of time waiting for uh, 
breakages. But with the exception of fixing the breakages, there's not a whole lot of easy work. All you just do is commit and wait for the server to tell you whether or not it worked or not. But waiting for breakages is really bad, because it doesn't just stop the one developer who screwed up. It stops the entire company, because you can't pull from trunk anymore. So uh, there's a variant on continuous integration uh, where something called pending head, where basically when you pull, rather than pulling what's currently uh, on trunk, you pull the last known green uh, head. So that's a little bit better, uh, because at least the company is not completely stopped and unable to get any work done. But it's still not great. Uh, so uh, there's, there's this concept of try servers, which are servers that will run the test for you so you don't have to run them on the local machine. And uh, so I'm calling this continuous try servers because the developer has, doesn't have to manually go and manage all of their try server requests and pay attention to which ones pass and which ones fail. It's always running for them automatically. You don't have to think about it. You just say, oh, I want to change this file. And automatically, in the process of committing, you, you kick off a test build. And if you make lots of frequent commits, then they get batched up, and you only have one test run as opposed to a whole bunch of test runs for every commit. And then finally, there's uh, some crazies out there who are recommending manual continuous integration, where you have to manually go log into the server and run the tests and tell everyone to stop pulling from trunk. And that's a lot of busy work. And maybe uh, you won't ever have to deal with breakages, but in the end, you'll spend all your time uh, being a slave to your test. So uh, that's why I'm recommending continuous try servers. It's worked great for us at Bettable. Uh, our main line is uh, very rarely green due to developer breakage. It's always flaky tests. And we're using this to run uh, our, our Selenium test now. And we're planning to put our Sauce Labs tests on our developer branch as well. Uh, so we'll be running on every single browser before you need to uh, push to trunk. So we'll get lots of information about uh, whether or not it's going to work or not. So any questions? Yeah. Let's hold on for the microphone. So a couple of questions. Um, first of all, so let me just see if I understand what you said. So I'm a developer. I made some changes. The server is going to run on my branch. But you said that the, all of the tests take five hours. Do you parallelize it somehow? Yeah, so we split up our tests into smaller batches. And so right now we're splitting them uh, into you know, two, but you can split them into four or eight or however many you need to. Uh, the reason why you don't want to split them all the way down to the point where you're running one test, uh, we're using EC2, by the way, to run our okay. tests. So we can spawn off as many test servers as we want. But if you split it too much, then you spend too much time setting up the EC2 instance and not enough time actually running the test. So it's not very efficient. But yeah, you can parallelize it as much as you want so the developer gets as fast feedback as you want. In practice, I think we get the answer between like 30 minutes to an hour after the developer does the commit. And so we do merges about once a day, which in practice works fine for us. We, we don't get too far divergent because we're working on different parts of the code base. But if we're, uh, you know, we could try to do merges faster than that if we have wanted to. Yeah, and the actual merge is not done by the try server. It's the developer who does the merge. Yeah, and, and so the, the merge is, is literally just a single command line. So you say git push to from origin to trunk, and uh, from, from your branch to trunk. And then uh, assuming that's a clean merge, that'll just uh, happen without any, uh, uh, any effort on the part of the developer. How long did you say in machine time that you use up after a, a commit on trunk? It really depends on whether we want to run the tests on every browser, or we just want to run our unit tests or uh, Selenium tests on, on Firefox. So right now, I think it takes us uh, about two hours of machine time to run the tests that we're running, although we're thinking about running more tests, more configurations. A, a useful statistic. Uh, if you check in code into Firefox trunk, yeah. that turns into 40 hours of machine yeah. time. And that's totally fine. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Like, yeah, there's we, like you should be encouraged to write lots unit of tests. tests. So yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's actually too cumbersome. Um, and we're trying to scale that back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of people say, if your tests run in more than 10 minutes, something is wrong. And I think that fundamentally, that's not realistic. You said uh, it's taking like five hours to run all the tests. Have you ever tried running parallelly? Or uh, are, are you running all the tests uh, after every build? Or what, is, what exactly are you doing now? So we've been experimenting with a number of different approaches. But right now, on our main line and on our developer branches, we split the tests and run them in parallel. We don't run, the, we don't, we don't run every test in parallel, but we spin it into smaller chunks such that we're utilizing EC2 in an efficient way. All right, thanks. Thank you, Carl.